We've called in David here in the FIFA 12 booth at uh, EA's booth in, at E3 and uh, I thought I'd ask him a question about why did you decide to rip out the core of last five years FIFA game, something like that, and, and make something completely new with FIFA 12? Uh, so we, we have three big changes this year that fundamentally changed the game. We talk about our gameplay revolution this year and we don't often do that, you're right. Uh, the, the big one, the player impact engine, has been in development for over two years. Uh, we uh, identified the fact that to get to the next level of true player physicality in the game, we needed a, a different technical solution. Uh, so we've done that this year. Uh, it is the uh, first time we've had a real-time physics engine in our game. Leads to very fluid, very believable collisions, very accurate, and kind of acts like a, a smoothing continuity uh, effect on the game. So when you see things, they're very realistic, they keep you in the moment and don't pull you out. So it's probably the largest change we've made to the game uh, since this transition to this console generation. Because something that, that I find in sports game is that w whenever you rip something out and you do something completely new, it usually takes one, one year for it to sort of set itself uh -huh. and for you to sort of balance everything out yep. and get it right. Uh, was it important to be able to have more than one year for this, you know, to work to get this to a point where you're comfortable with releasing it. So for the player impact engine, yeah, I mean, technically it's been a very difficult thing to do, but it's also solved a number of very hard things for us. When you talk about balancing the, the, bigger, the bigger challenge in the, in the early development cycle anyway, was trying to make sure that the uh, precision dribbling and the tactical defending were, were working in tandem very well. So we talk about a trinity of gameplay innovations, and the reason we say that is all three of them are very important. So on the one hand, you have precision dribbling, which is a very high fidelity control system of the ball, uh, very rewarding and engaging for good dribblers. On the other hand, you have the new tactical defending, which is about engaging your brain when you don't have the ball, uh, rather than just a mindless button press. You now have to position and read the play and then react if you want. And then you've got the player impact engine that kind of sits above them both. When those two things come together, uh, you have these really, really outstanding animations for the collision. So it was important for us to make sure there was good harmony in the system, and I think we've done that this year. Because I think that defending in FIFA games and, and football games in general has usually been something like a good defender is, is someone who attacks the ball and makes the tackles, whereas someone who's got his skills in another way, you usually have one stopper who's, who's, like a little, who's doing that and then someone who falls behind, covers up angles, makes sure that no one gets through, and that sort of part of the game hasn't really been represented before. So this is this is why we've done tactical defending. When when people were pressing that press button in, in previous FIFAs, they were launching defenders like homing missiles up the pitch. And while at times there's a, a good reason for that, and some teams do defend like that in real life, in our game uh, it often led to the, the this like suite of problems. Everything from the formation being broken because you're pulling players out from from too deep and putting them in the wrong place, through to this overwhelming sense of pressure. So people were like button mashing to pass the ball around. So removing that and introducing a more cerebral and an authentic uh, kind of take on, on defending with tactical defending has been something we've been wanting to do now uh, for a little while uh, and this year we're finally happy enough to kind of get it out there and, and let the fans experience a very different FIFA. So in terms of the full collision things how does that sort of affect something like the goalkeeper mm. like in, in terms of a corner or yep. you know getting past players or, or getting into get something that's it's not a foul, or is it a foul? It's like yeah. in a grey area. How do you how do you deal with all of that? Uh, so the goalkeepers also have uh, real time physics on them with the player impact engine, and obviously uh, collisions can occur not just uh, on the ground but also in the air. Uh, something that we've obviously solved with the player impact engine are those moments where mid cycle in an animation a collision occurs. They now uh, unfold in a very uh, uh, believable way, and obviously we have a near limitless variety of outcomes from those collisions. Um, as far as you know, is it a foul? Is it not a foul? It's something that we've been working on a lot. Uh, obviously, goalkeepers used to have either a yes, it was a foul, no, it wasn't. Now there is more nuance in all of our collisions. So the player impact engine allows us to kind of do every type of collision from a gentle shove right the way through to a brutal two-footed sliding tackle. So, you know, we've had to do a lot of work there. And I think it differs from country to country about what's a foul and what's not as yeah, well. Probably, yeah, you're probably right. 
So uh, in terms of the online component, what, what are you trying to bring that's new this year? Sure, so we're not talking about our game modes as far as uh, online is concerned, but one of the big announcements at E3 was the EA Sports Football Club. Uh, it's a very big deal for us. We wanted to make sure that you know this massive appetite we have for football and this massive appetite that, that fans have for playing FIFA is serviced. Uh, so with FIFA 12, uh, we're kicking off the EA Sports Football Club. Uh, basically, everything you do in FIFA now matters. It's like the heartbeat of the game. Uh, so the more you play, the better you are at the game, no matter where uh, in the game or who you're playing with. Uh, you'll accumulate experience points, you'll level up and you'll be able to compare yourself against your friends, see if you're better than them or not, as well as also compare yourself to the whole world. Uh, so there's this kind of global leaderboard, if you like, of, of how good am I at FIFA now. On top of that, we're also uh, surfacing that information within the game. So you'll see when your friends are leveling up, when they're losing games, when they're winning games, as well as making sure that you know that that's being pushed out to our website easportsfootball.com and from there you can throw it onto Facebook if you want etc. Uh, on top of that you know everyone that plays FIFA is, is a fan of a club uh, so we're introducing a feature called support your club where you can pledge your allegiance to a real football team uh, and then when you're playing the game everything you do not only contributes to your experience points and your leveling up but on a weekly basis we'll be capturing everything that you do uh, for your club too uh, and that will go towards uh, a kind of virtual leaderboard for uh, those clubs. P teams will be promoted and relegated based on the success and the skill of the fans of that club. So every week is a season. Every season, teams will be promoted, teams will be relegated. I'm hoping Leicester City uh, get promoted to the Premier League and see a bit of uh, excitement there for a change. Uh, and on top of that, we're also ripping stuff from the real world and pushing it into the game just to keep the content fresh and exciting, keep our fans engaged because we know they want that. Is it going to be a numbers game who has the most fans or is it going to be interesting for like a League sure. 2 club as, as well as a Premiership club to sort of yeah. be in there? Totally. So uh, the way it works is uh, if I am a Leicester City fan and I uh, earn 500 points and every other Leicester City fan earns 500 points in that week too, we're averaging out rather than doing it as a total box. Obviously Manchester United, very popular, more fans. What we want to see is the skill of those fans. So what is the average score? of those fans rather than how many fans have they got so it's fair um, it's about who you support not who you're playing with so uh, you know if you're a Man United fan you can still play uh, with Barcelona if you want and we won't hold it against you but everything you're doing is for the team you support rather than the team you're playing with that's great. So, so someone who's supporting a smaller team isn't handicapped in that no, sense. No, not at all. And, and, and that's what we want to do. We want to show how skillful uh, the players are, how dedicated they are. Uh, and that's not really about um, you know, who you're playing with. It's about your time and the investment and, and, and how great you are at FIFA. Looking forward to playing it uh, this October? Uh, so we're, yeah, we're saying autumn or fall at the moment. But uh, yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Thanks,